OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, my name is Alicia Dunan. I am from um, Community College, San Diego Community College, continuing yet, and I am also now a OTAN SUNY subject matter expert. Look, I'm so new, I can't even remember what it is. <laughs> so, anyway, welcome. Um, I'm very excited to share this information with you all, something that I've done for many years with the district. Um, let's see. All right, so here, welcome all. So um, just, I already did my introduction, but if you want, um, because we have a lot of people here, if you want to say where you're from, we have a few minutes. Uh, introduce yourself, what department, um, and what brought you here today? How about that? If you want to go around, let's start with you real quick. Sure. Hi, I'm Diana Vera Alba. I'm an ESL instructor at the same district as Elisa. Um, what brought me here is I'm the OER coordinator, but I'm very, very interested in <coughs> accessibility for my students. I teach ESL, so accessibility is really important probably because I teach online. Thank you. My name is Chunyi McMahon. I come from Globus Adult Education, and I'm a uh, nursing program director there, and I'm the only Using CTI pro, CTE program uses a lot of technology, and this year I joined the DLAC for two years and big commitment. So it was one of those things that I'm going to get to come here and present. Oh. <laughs> I know now I can relax because I did it yesterday. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so, yes, I, I think it, the uh, TDLS, the best thing that ever happened seven years ago. And uh, I think DLAC is going to teach me a lot. And we moving our CTE, especially nursing and health ally, moving toward the technology instead of a paper and pencil. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Belache, and I am a, an instructor, beginning ESL instructor. And I also uh, work for SDCCE and uh, Miracosta College. And um, because I teach a beginning class, um, tech skills for beginning learners, as you may know, are a little uh, more uh, at a beginning level. So I'm here to, to learn any, anything that you have here to, for digital uh, for students, beginner ESL students. I, I'm Christy Reyes. I'm also a Miracosta ESL faculty. And um, I'm here to see all my friends. I've been coming to TDS yeah, for as long as I can remember. So it's good to see everybody, and I'm always wanting to learn and grow, so that's why I'm here. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Larissa Seaton. I'm from um, Monterey um, Peninsula Unified School District, Adult School, and I'm an ESL teacher. And this is my first time at OTAN, and I'm having fun. <laughs> Hi, I'm Veronica Parker, and I'm a coordinator representing the CAT Technical Assistance Project. Um, my colleague, Natalie, and I do the Southern Digital Equity as well as the Education um, for the Digital Divide. And so we're looking for uh, tools and resources that continue to show the space. I'm Shelby Schmidt. I'm an ESL teacher in the Southern Digital School, or Pathway Digital School. Um, and I'm here to learn and glean as much information as I can single one of you. Uh, and then uh, what's your favorite season is also yeah. We can do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am a winter sports person. Perfect. We'll do a point on that one. I know we have a lot of snow. Oh, my name is Katrina Tamura and I teach at Miracosta College and Palomar College. Um, I teach in non-credit ESL. Um, and this is important, it's always going to be, and so I think it's just important to keep showing up, learning, and applying things, new things in the classroom. Great. So, overseas. 
Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mariana Sofa. I teach uh, ESL at Miracosta as well, we're a theater group here. <laughs> um, I always want to learn and connect with our colleagues. There is always uh, nice to learn new things, but also refresh because there's so much data that sometimes it's nice to you have a refresh or a validation of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And my favorite season is summer. It's just so nice. It's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. I'm Linda Pantowski. I teach ESL basic at uh, Tamil Pius Adult School in Marin. Uh, this is my first year, and um, I've taught ESL to kids and in public schools in Richmond and Oakland. But but teaching adults is new, and it's amazing. I'm loving it, but it's very challenging, and bringing technology in at the basic literacy level, like you say, is really challenging. And I'm also supporting a CTE class in um, healthcare aid. My name is Rebecca Clampett. I'm from Corona Narco Unified School District. I'm an ESL teacher, um, multi-level. And what brought me here today was the warmer weather. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, what brought me here initially is Canvas. I wanted to learn about Canvas. And finding out it's going to take 10 hours to onboard. And I kind of shifted and I've been taking classes that I can apply and do something for my classroom tomorrow or Monday. So I'm shifted over and learning to doing the online games and the digital games and loving it. So. Um, my name is Ellen Jackson. Um, I'm an ESL teacher from Huntington Beach Adult School. Um, I am here, of course, like everyone, to learn more um, so that we can grow, um, be able to use it in my classroom, and also be able to share um, with my um, colleagues. I'm Dr. Linda Mokaba. I'm the Administrator of Educational Technology for the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Um, that's a long way of saying I have responsibility for bringing tech to 33 institutions where our learners may not have even seen a laptop in about 30 years. Um, so this particular course is interesting to me because um, my most recent experience is with a 68-year-old student who um, didn't know what a mouse was and did not know how to use a trackpad. And so just bringing them from that very, very early concept of uh, I've never had this device, I've never used this device, to understand that when they leave us, this is this is the bus schedule, this is the, the telemedicine, this is the banking, um, and giving them the digital literacy skills that they need to, to not become a guest again is my whole view. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My name is Erica Villarita, I'm a resource teacher in the Water District in adult education and this is one of the biggest challenges I see teachers I support, getting students familiar with the technology so they can access the Google Classroom, et cetera. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hansen. Um, I'm with Grossmont Adult Education in San Diego. Um, the second question is a lot. I mean, yeah, we can do that one. I wouldn't okay, would be here at all today if it wasn't for my amazing administrator, my director. That's why we're here. She gave us this opportunity to be part of BLAC and uh, TPLS, and obviously to bring it to our students and to our other teachers. Favorite season? I love cool weather, so this is awesome. <laughs> Am I the only one that likes cool weather? Yeah. Not snow. I'm Jennifer Owens, I'm the director of ESL at Grossmont Adult, and Joan is full of it because she would be here on her own if we hadn't <laughs> talked about it. But um, my favorite season when it's winter time, I wish it was summer, and when it's summer, I wish it was winter. So I guess somewhere in between, but um, we're just happy to be here and learning and just go with you. Thank you. I'm Virginia Riola, and I'm from uh, Florida Unified School District, Florida Adult School. Um, I am, uh, um, I sit proctor, but that I do that in the evenings during the day. I'm in the office, and I'm here because I want to learn more and how to support my teachers in the classroom so they can support the students. Hello, Hi. my name is Sarah Salifolto. I um, teach uh, high set in Spanish and English for Florida Adult School. Um, what brought you here is, is um, well, we're getting ready to kind of move from paper-based because our students are so used to paper to computers, mm -hmm. but we need to get them into that of computer literacy. And my favorite season is summer because I have a lot of free time. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> 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 
Oh, I thought I'd sneak in. Cindy Moskowski, hi everybody. It's so nice to, oh, and I'm working part-time for OTM, a former ESL teacher, and um, supporting, um, supporting here, supporting this year. And it's nice to network with everybody. I love spring. The garden is starting to flourish. I love that time of year. Um, and I'm Marie Dorner. I work for San Diego Community, I don't know what we're called now, San Diego College of Continuing Education. We keep changing our name. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, trying to figure out what is adult ed and what should be a better name for it. So right now we're at College of Continuing Education. I'm a learning disability specialist and I teach basic ed to folks, and I'm the resource specialist for students in regular classes. So. My name is Joy Cole. I also work for uh, SBCE. Um, I teach a class, a uh, communication class. All right, very good. And I know I, I did, you asked me, what's your favorite season? Oh, what's my favorite season? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to say uh, summer because we have a pool, so I get to have a pool. Oh, <laughs> That's cool. I was going to say spring, but I do like the summer. Um, the other thing is, you all, I remember you all asked me, do you need a computer? There's a couple things that we can use on the computer, but if you don't, it's okay. Um, I do have the... Okay, so what we're going to learn today, tips that we're going to focus on. We're gonna, because it is digital learning, okay? Just the basics. We're gonna go on keyboards, one-click mouse, touch screens, mouse pointer center settings, and immersive reader tool. Maybe this is too basic, but we, I will show you some, some tips that we've learned. And we just had, we just did another one prior to this, and we kind of went over that. So similar to, but here we go. So five tips, here we go. All right, so keyboards. This information is designed to work with a desktop or a laptop or standalone monitor for learners who may need access. An educator could try these following ideas. So um, here, these are examples of different types of keyboards. Now, obviously, if you are in a lab and we have these keyboards, you could switch it out, okay? Now, if you have labs that have laptops, you know you can get an exterior one. So, so it's workable. Now, I was listening to, I'm seeing you said a 68-year-old didn't know what a mouse was or the keyboard. Now, vision, this is perfect because you can see it. Now, you have a variety of types that you want. Um, when I was in my site closed down because of COVID, but I had assorted colors. And some, let's say you preferred this one, but Christy really liked this. Some like this because the colors are the high hit notes or high hit letters. So all of them have different, different whatever you want. So, um, so here's an example of what. So, so when we are in our labs, I would also have staff from this agency helping. Now, what I noticed was that some staff preferred these better than one of those. Uh, and I'm talking about just the regular. So these are just something, um, I do have a website that you can look at, but you can Google these. These are called, I think it's just an old problem. Yeah. We're trying to compare those. Yeah. With oh, oh yeah, oh, we can pass it around. Probably uh, more prominent. Absolutely, yeah. 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 There's, There's also a clear plastic, plastic yeah. overlay or a color plastic right. overlay. I don't have a, she had all the others. So you can also, now the things that I'm going to talk about, so the, we call these big read keyboards, okay? Um, yeah, so they come in different colors, okay? And I'm going to click this over. So also remember oh, that. The stickers. Yeah, I think that's the next one. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna go over that one and the three different ones. Oh, so the, okay. the, the great thing about this, you don't have to have, you know, this can help with vision. 
Now, how many of you wear readers when you're typing? So, I mean, <laughs> and when you're typing and you're at your own keyboard, you don't have to have these. You can have just this keyboard. Does that make it easier for you? Yeah. And, and also, for seniors who are new coming onto it, this, this is so much easier. It's more accessible. So they're going to feel positive. So that's kind of a, one of the great things about that. Okay, so that's an easy read. Uh, so here's another thing. Um, I'll talk about uh, the F5 button. So this is an educator can click the F5 on their PC, their laptop. This gives an option for the keyboard to light up. And it's called the backlight. Do any of you know what that backlight is? Have you ever used it? Okay, I see some shaking of heads. So try to, if you don't know, you can, I was gonna say, let's try it, but write it down, the backlight. Know where that's at. Because on some keyboards, it'll be nice. I prefer it because I like to see my letters lit up. My husband doesn't like it, and that's fine. I personally like to see more things. I just like it, so that works for me. So this is another little tip that's right in there. If you don't know where to find it, go on your toolbar, go on your toolbar, and go under settings, and you should have something that will say backlight. Okay. So that's kind of a, a nice one. Some people like it, some people don't. You may not have the F5. It may not be on yours, but go under settings and look for a backlight. Okay, so the big keys, that's exactly what I was talking about, the big keys. Now, this is the one I prefer because I like the yellow with the black. That's me personally, but that's, you know, you don't have to have that. So again, see how that yellow stands out a little bit more than just something to look at, something different. Alicia, does it have anything to do with, with vision? Vision? It can. I mean, if you... If you are having vision problems, this can yeah. be easier. Now, some people, maybe the yellow is a distraction for them. Mm -hmm. So then you wouldn't use that. So I, I think my next one, I'll show you my, the keys. So here we go. Big Keys is a, a visually friendly keyboard which can be purchased for learners who are, who are visually <laughs> challenged or need easier reading access. Because I can be visually challenged at midnight, okay? <laughs> this also helps with finger dexterity issues, tremors, arthritis, or CP, any one of them. Because you can see it easier, right? And the keys are bigger. Well, you'll see this one's bigger. All right. The color schemes come in an assortment of colors also, okay? So you don't have, you can have white, yellow, black, and then the colors are in different colors also. Um, what I did, again, I have a personal preference, but that doesn't mean that you like that one. So I'll make sure I have two of each sorted out so everyone can have their own choice. All right, here's the stickers. So here's another way of doing it. This is what, um, so an alternative to purchasing these or purchasing this would be a sticker. Okay, these you can buy on Amazon. You can go into AbleNet, any of these uh, catalogs, and you can choose what kind you want. So you would just attach it right on there. Yes, do any of those have uppercase with like a smaller lowercase on the same key? Because they don't always... <laughs> right, um, I only see these in the, in the uppercase because it would be just mimicking your keyboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be hard. Yeah. And that would be on a key, on a key that would, that would distract me. Well, because they use, you know, lowercase more than they use uppercase. Right. Mm -hmm. And amazing, as you said that, um, we had um, discovered that, and I, I was in another workshop of saying that when you're writing your name, you know how you need space. A lot of our students didn't know, know where the space was. So in all our computers in our lab, we devised like a red dot. And that meant the space. So we had come up with these different things of meaning what we wanted for them. So yes, and also, again, making sure that we have everyone, we also have uh, keyboards with braille, and there's also keyboards with braille stickers. So you can, you can order them with braille stickers also. So just making sure you have everything. And again, the other great thing about these, because we had a, you know, a lab, I had a braille keyboard, I would just pop it in when that student, I needed my student. So making sure we're hitting all 
modes, all learners. Okay, what's the next one? So the one-click mouse. Now, um, I also noticed when we were doing our labs that because we have these with the scroll and the right click, the, the basic, the basic one, right? We all know what we're talking about that. But if you're someone who's like, I just want, I just want to do it. So what happens? What happens when they're using these mouse? If you don't know how to use a mouse, what? Who you knows what kind? Buttons. You hit the right. <laughs> they're into the another another <laughs> land, right? <laughs> That's not good. So to be a little bit more, um, to make it more successful, this is the one-click mouse, and this is what we have used on many a student, uh, many learners. So great for working with learners who are challenged, again, with dexterity and mouse control. And this mouse is just a basic one click and go, which I like. That's very simple, <laughs> OK? And this is a stepping stone to the conventional mouse, OK? That doesn't mean, oh, I'm doomed. I'm OK. I can only be on this. Absolutely not. You can go on other ones. So this is an option. This is so much. You, it's so successful versus the scroll. That scroll thing is just, <sighs> so that's why we have, and again, if I was in the lab, I could just pop it in and take it out. Because I've noticed that with happy hands going all over, take things away, why could put them out, right? <laughs> I see a lot of head nodding. That's what, well, that's what I had discovered, take it away. All right. So here's the next thing. Um, I think almost now all, um, everything is a touch screen. How many of you have touch screens in your labs or a lot probably? No? Okay, well that's, because, <laughs> okay, we had touch screens, but we had to buy them and put them on. So this is how old they were. But it's still good. So the learner can just use uh, a touch on an icon on the screen with the finger and go. Okay, so we like that. This can be very empowering for a learner to proceed with the activity by themselves, which we all know, right? Some computers already have touch screens already included. Now, you're saying, well, what can, you know, what are they doing? It sounds like someone had asked me, you know, I have very low learners. Okay, so a touch screen is going to be great because you can put them on a matching game. And you can find, there are adults, because that's our, what we work with, that you can find adult matching games out there. That, and if not, you can make them. It's going to take a little work, but you can do it. And they like it. So the best thing, sometimes you might want to work by yourself, or you might want two people to, you might want to work with a buddy. The other thing is, because of what we do, we also ask them, hey, so start telling them, describing what is it. What, so make, um, they can have communication. So if you're ESL, you can say, what is this? You can make, make one on kitchen and have to match it with the word, however you want, uh, a lot of great matching. So the touch screen is something we, I really liked. Um, the other thing, I think I have the next one. Oh, like I said, so it's the use of a stylus. I didn't bring one, I forgot that. But you all know what a stylus is? So some of the stylus now, if you're working with someone who is arthritic, you know that you can pump it up, right? You can make it bigger. So think about that now. What are, what are some tools that you can use? Uh, you can use uh, the, uh, do you remember the pencil? The little, the gripper on the pencil? You can use that to make it a little bit bigger. Now if I'm very arthritic, and you can use, you know, you can use a piece of material. You can use a wash, I like to use a small uh, washcloth because of the texture of the cotton and you can wrap it around, and that makes it bigger, because if you're, ar and you're arthritic and you can't close your hands, there you go. But there's also, you can probably go to any of those orthotic places and buy that. I'm just saying, working in a place with low budget, you know what I'm saying, come up with different ideas. So that's one thing that we did, and you know what, some of them really like the stylus, because you can get them kind of fancy. You know, not within budget reason, okay? You know what I'm saying? So some, some like to use it. It's a tool for the touch screen. And again, you can adapt it. So some great things. Yeah. So, and you can, see now this 
is pretty tiny. Yeah. We've had, I'm not kidding, we've adapted a stylus that was very big. We in, in added like another something to it because that's, if you are having problems gripping it, look at that, I can't, it's not gonna happen. And what if you are sitting here and you want to, and you're in a wheelchair, are you going to be able to do it? You got to get, you know, so that's why you need to be extended. It's almost like a wand. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so you're going to have to have that. So again, look and see what the, your learner needs and just adapt it. You know, and I think we're so grateful working at sites that don't have a lot of money that you become, <laughs> yeah, you become very resourceful. Yes, I mean, is that a good thing? It is. I mean, at least I'm able now to come up with an idea to get someone to, who's in a wheelchair who can't work, you know, but I can get them now to, to do it, right? So that's kind of that's all that I All right. So here's the example of the touch screen again. I used the concentration game, something like that. You can do. And then, um, oh, here's for the mouse pointer. So this would be in your settings that you would find. How many have you, you know there's a mouse pointer setting? Okay, so so this is a great one. Um, helps with visual, visual acuity, concentration, and dexterity. So with this one, once you get in there, this looks very complicated to me. This is like too much information. But I will tell you one of the favorite ones that my students Light is this little, I call it the Mickey Mouse hand. And you can change the color to yellow, yes? It's also really good if you're doing distance learning because if you're doing it on Teams or Zoom or whatever, it's really hard for people to see if the teacher is moving the mouse around. So make it much bigger than change the color. Right, and then my next slide will have that. It yeah. is it is perfect. I, you know what, and then you have some who don't like that. So when I had the lab, I had a variety. And they all knew which ones. After a while, they'll know which ones to go to. So yes, so take a peek in your um, settings and check and check it out. Um, you can you know that you can make them click and, or do that spiral, that dragging. To me, that's annoying. I don't like that. It's like, ugh, talk about visual acuity. After that, I'll have it, right? So um, yeah. All right, so this was if we were going to do it. So I just put in here, lo locate the ta your taskbar, find the search. You all seem to be able to handle that. If not, it's in my, it'll be in the Google slide when you can, if you want to go. If anyone wants to try it, we can do it later. Good, any questions on that? Okay. So there we go, there's the example. You can pick the colors that you want. You can make it bigger. Kind of a nice thing, nice little feature. I like it for me, and I like it a little bit bigger. So when I'm looking at all my different, uh, what, icon desktops, uh, I just need that big pointer. <laughs> so that's so good. Okay, so the immersive reader, how many of our, you probably all have used it, right? Okay, so I, no, can you, yeah, don't, don't assume. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, the Immersive Reader. Um, this is a great tool. It's, it's not a, available on everything, it's just Microsoft. Right, you're right. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, this one you have to go, um, I believe, you, in Google, or because my husband has a Mac, he went under voice. It has a voice that reads out, so you have to go under tools. Um, but this one, Yes, it'll talk to you. Let's see. So if you want to try it, it would be definitely in, M uh, yes, you're right, not Mac and iPad. So it's a Windows, it's in Word, and it comes, what I did in my search bar under, but it's already there now. I went in there and said immersive reader. Once I'm in my Microsoft Word, it'll come up and there it is. Mm -hmm. You press it, you type, try, I want to test this out, it'll talk to you. The menu will come down. It's a good point. She, um, she just reminded me, it's also in Canvas. Yeah. Oh, it's yes, that's right, in the edit mode, right? And it's in Teams as well, if you use Microsoft Suite. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. It's great that it's in Canvas. Yes. How many of you use Canvas for your, for everyone? Does students? <clears throat> great. 
Now, I understand um, as far as our department for uh, adults with disabilities, there's hardly any who use it at our site because that's, that's a lot, right? I use it. Well, as a teacher, <laughs> but do the students use it? Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, a lot of yeah. my students use it. Yeah. Oh, so she, she... And I, I, I use it in my classroom every day, and then I tell them how to log in every day. I mean... So it's a lot Because of... I think the passwords and getting in... That's um, tough. Right? Because then they have access to the immersive read... Well, and then I have... Yeah, they, then they have access to Immersive Reader, and they also have access to the other websites that I access, so it's easy for them to click. So my products, I put all can be found on Amazon and other retailers. Um, so it was big keys, stickers, the one click, and the stylus. Okay, so those minimal, I mean, you can get fancier stuff. And here's one keyboard I didn't show. This had the, um, uh, a guard on it so and this as you know this is a little bit different this, this particular one so what well, the gr great thing about this is what what do you think you can do on this what, well that's the big keys yeah keyboard, big right? keys yes yeah. but what there's something i don't know if you guys can pick up on it or is it just because i i know what it is so this if look i can put my hand on it and i'm not hitting the rest of the keys so i can do this if you just want to type your name, so it goes like that. Yeah, you can. So the other great thing about it, so also seniors with any of the tremors going on, yeah. that's going to be awesome. Okay, so think about um, your seniors, uh, your parents, or anyone in your family, because I know this would be very helpful back in the day, but I didn't know about it. So that would be, and that would make them a lot, um, you know, they could do social media and stuff like that. So this is, you know, again, we don't have to think disabilities, just think of usability, okay? What makes it easier for them? So this, and this can be in plastic, and Joy, you said there's metal out there. So there's, these are key guards, key guards. So something that's really great for them. And here's the other thing that I, we have used, remember I told you that we had like a big wand? Now let's say that you don't have that, you know, you just can't do it. So if I could use your stylist again. So imagine that you have your stylist, my big stick again, I can do it this way. Okay, so again, just being creative and looking at your learner to see what can I do to help, to help them. I, I'm almost there, what else can I do to help them? So it's just kind of thinking outside the box, real outside, but getting them there, just getting them used to it. Yes. Do you mind, Alicia, if I share the Device Lending and Demonstration Center information? Sure. Yeah. Do you all? She she works for a. Um, well, I, I actually work um, along with the community college. I also work for United Cerebral Palsy. There, um, uh, there's a technology lab. One of the programs that we have there is a device lending and demonstration center through Ability Tools. We are one of 10 device lending libraries through the state of California. And uh, we loan all kinds of different mouse, keyboards, communication devices. Um, and it's a free loan program for 35 days. That's a great tip. And also, the great thing about what that, let's pretend you're not sure if you want this, right, Joy? I'm not sure this would work for me. Can I go check it out? Absolutely. So 30 days of trial and error. That's pretty good. 35. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying you saw it. So that's a great, a great tip. Just to know, again, think outside the box. It's not only for adults with disabilities. What ability can I help them with? Because there's so many seniors out there who just get that keyboard is just too crazy. Change it up for them, right? All right. So here's the other thing. In summary, I just want to go over the technology continues to improve and provide greater access for all people of a variety of challenges, right? Um, 
Some great ones are OTAN's accessibility resources. If any of you, um, if you click that, it will take you to the link. Also, WAVE, this is talking about the different accessibilities. CAST, anyone familiar with that? That's um, UDL, Universal Design Learning. Grapple Docs, now that's uh, for, isn't that just for um, Google? Google? Yes, so that's Google. Extensions. Yes, extensions. This will be all in, I'm gonna give you the QR code right now. Oh. Oh, any questions? I know, gosh, I think I went really fast, sorry. Um, Yes, just to add, someone asked about stickers in lowercase, so those are, you can also get those on Amazon. The lowercase ones? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we predominantly only did the, the uppercase because when you look at the keyboard, it's all Arial font, so we, we stayed with that just because, yes. I have a question. Yeah. So I know your students are adults with disabilities and a lot of us teach outside of that. So you know your students are coming with certain needs we may, maybe we see, oh, I think this student needs something. How do you approach that student without like insulting them? Or... An adult? So maybe you could have a couple of, you know, just kind of yeah, maybe display. this might help. Do you think this could help you? Okay. You know, how, yeah. yeah, just, you know, why don't we try this for you today? Because this is like one of the least expensive ways before you do the baby. But you can go to the lending. Check it out. <laughs> Any other questions?